Hello, everyone, and welcome to the to today's session. Uh, my name is Joseph, and you joined us here for our first uh, WSET Events Hub session of the new academic year. It's back to school season in so many parts of the world, so we're we're looking forward to today's session. Um, and you join us for a bite-sized one that is all about Grenache. Um, although, as you're going to hear, we're probably going to refer it more as Garnacha throughout today's session, and that will become apparent why. Um, so my name is Joseph. Um, I'm joined also by Ferran. He's our expert, and I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to him in a second. Um, if you've got any questions for us throughout the session, please just post them in the Q&A box. So you'll see there's a chat box and you'll see there's a Q&A box. If you've got a specific question that you'd like to be answered, put it in that Q&A section and we'll get to as many of those as possible at the end. This session is going to be available on our YouTube channel afterwards. So if you want to watch it again, um, if you've got to leave halfway through, share it with friends, family, whoever, um, you will be able to find it on WSET's YouTube channel. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce Ferran Fendeas. Um, he is Wine Director at El Bui Foundation. Lots of you might have heard of that famous restaurant, El Bui. Um, Ferran is linked to, uh, has been linked to that team since 1999, um, and he's got numerous accolades uh, from his history, including Best Sommelier in Spain in 2006. He won the um, National Gastronomy Award in 2011. And also recently, and um, we're very proud of this for him as well, WSET's own Outstanding Alumni Award back in 2020. He does lots of teaching for WSET uh, throughout the world, including uh, at home in Barcelona. Um, and he's a regular judge in lots of international wine competitions, such as Decanter um, World Wine Awards. Um, now, he is also a very busy man. Um, he's a specialist and he's a writer for www.jancisrobinson.com. I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with that wine review website. Um, and he's the Spanish specialist for it. So fantastic person to be talking about uh, today's subject on Garnacha. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce him and let him get on with today's session. Excellent. Uh, hello, hello, Joseph. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, introduction and uh, hello to all from uh, Barcelona. So happy to be sharing time with you and so happy to be the first of this uh, 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 course. So we'll be talking about Garnacha, uh, or uh, in France, as Jose was saying, uh, uh, Grenache. And I have a lot of uh, material to, to go through. So I'm going to be kind of quick uh, starting. So happy to be sharing this, this moment with you. Uh, Joseph did a great introduction. Thank you for that. Just um, talking about Chancey Robinson and trying to push you into it. I'm sure if I didn't have my diploma, I could never, never, never be part of a chances team today. So for the ones going to WCT, keep going. For the ones uh, going for the diploma, keep pushing and not give up. Never, never, eh? because it's, it's, um, it's uh, really worth it. And also so happy to be assessor of Tincavi, which is uh, in Catalonia, the official body uh, and Catalan Wine Institute that promotes, controls, all, all the viticulture and the winemaking. So here we are. And uh, let's go and let's start talking about uh, Garnacha. And the first the first uh, text where uh, Garnacha appears is the Agricultura General uh, from our own Alonso Herrera. Alonso Herrera, he was an agronomist born in Toledo. Uh, he's so so famous in in um, in, in Spain and, and he has he had published uh, back in times this uh, book called Agricultura General where where he describes many many grapes and one of those is um, uh, Aragonés you see here uh, Aragonés I have tried to translate uh, more or less and is 
about a, it, it talks about a tight grape uh, which uh, tight bunches uh, that carries a lot of weight uh, but gives depending on on where it's planted uh, more concentrated uh, fuller wines or kind of lighter so that can be so or that would be the, the first mention to garnacha before being called garnacha okay so Sorry for my Italian friends. I don't know if there are some, some uh, Italian friends. So you see here more or less the crown of Aragon at its uh, splendorous moment with the Balearic Islands, Sardinia, Sicily, Southern Italy. You see here the, the map and of course, uh, uh, a Catalonian. And being very, very sorry for, for my many, many uh, Italian friends, we have been discussing a lot about uh, the origins of Garnacha. Uh, and I can tell, or thanks to the DNI profile today, we know that taking into account the genetic uh, data, Garnacha, it's very close relative with Verdejo or Alarije. Alarije is a grape from Extremadura in Spain or uh, Airen. So they have many uh, genetic uh, connection and proximity to, to Garnacha. Okay, so we know that. Bernacha, Bernacha uh, in the Middle Age and the Modern Age, uh, it was a white variety from Italy. And somehow Bernacha and Bernacha uh, are adaptations from Italian to the Hispanic language of Aragonese. So the name Garnacha, Granache, uh, might come from, from Italy, but uh, the grape was originated in the east of the Iberian Peninsula, and of course uh, in uh, in Catalonia. Uh, just just to 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 point it, and uh, I don't want to create any any polemics, but it seems that the the origin of Garnacha Grenache Canonau it's uh, from the Peninsula uh, Ibérica. One very 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 interesting uh, research has been published by Terra de Garnachas. Uh, Terra de Garnachas and, uh, and Incavi working together. Terra Garnachas is a, an association of vine growers from different parts of, of Catalonia, very active people, very, very top people. And they have done uh, a research tasting, see, blind tasting, 3,000 Garnachas without oak, right? That's very important. So imagine they, they go and they do a, a huge tasting, 3,000 wines from Garnacha from different parts of of Europe, uh, Sardinia, Roussillon, uh, Navarra, Aragon, and of course, Catalonia. Uh, and they can afterwards, after the, the, the analysis and the testing, they came up with uh, five main descriptors, flavor aromas descriptors for uh, Garnacha. See? You see them in the, in the screen. So it's red and black fruits, uh, blood orange, naranja sanguina, plum, medicinal herbs and licorice, okay? Uh, so licorice is important because we normally think always that licorice is a, is a tertiary flavor, tertiary aroma, so it comes from the oak uh, or even for, from, from, the, from the, normally from the oak, uh, but not in garnacha. So in garnacha without oak, we can also find some licorice uh, aromas together with this blood orange, which is super sexy and, and beautiful. Sorry, uh, I should not say sexy in WCT. Uh, forgive me. Oh, I won't do it again. But it's a it's a it's a great uh, aroma that comes through uh, the class of of uh, of garnacha. Yeah? So you see here the the spicy, the fresh, the fresh red fruits. Uh, the floral, the candied fruit, the uh, mm, the orange uh, and licorice that are common descriptors for for garnacha. This is one point. Another super interesting point about garnacha is that it's a mutant varietal. Uh, it's a mutant grape. That means that keeps changing uh, uh, a lot when you do the the uh, muscle selection. Uh, it it can it can mutate and it's very easy that it really develops a lot of clonal uh, differences. Uh, so it's uh, you see here you see the the in the screen it's great. Eh? It's the same plant, the yeah? same plant from the same uh, shoot. Some of the grapes are uh, red and in the same same one some of the other grapes are white that means something is going on there and has been a, a change a mutation in in the grape 
Uh, it happens also with Pinot. We have Pinot Noir, Pinot Blanc, many different Pinots. One of those are top and the other ones are less, less uh, interesting. It happens also with Garnacha. The clonal uh, effect with Garnacha is so, so important. Getting to the, to the right clones, normally the old clones, that uh, brings and enhances uh, uh, quality. And trust me, Garnacha has a huge, huge clonal uh, diversity. That's why, that's why we have so many um, style, kinds of, uh, of Garnacha. Uh, okay, Garnacha Tinta, uh, that's the, the grape we'll be focusing today uh, with permission of Garnacha Blanca. Garnacha Peluda, Garnacha Peluda, I love, I love the wines from Garnacha uh, Peluda. We call it Peluda like Haiti uh, because on the, on the reverse of the leaves, the, it has some kind of Haiti that protects, uh, the, protects the leaf. Can be more uh, aromatic and, and acidic. Uh, more more vivid garnacha peluda it's a, a great great grape more more full of flavors that i would love i could love to see uh, more and more planted in in catalonia and also uh, another favorite is garnacha gris garnacha and roja which is pinky like the diagustraminer you know but we use it for um, for white wines so interesting uh, uh, grapes okay maybe the acids are kind of i kind of low but today today for Garnacha Gris and Garnacha Blanca, many of the vine growers, or a lot of vine growers, they can do like two different harvests. So harvesting uh, at the beginning of, of the harvest and picking the grapes with more acidity, uh, probably more kind of um, vegetal character, and also in the same vineyard do an later uh, harvest that gives a kind of balance that is very interesting and many producers are are doing so in in catalonia especially in, in terra alta okay so picking at two different uh, uh, rapid moments and two different timings it's uh, great for for keeping the balance of 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 garnacha and of course garnacha and catalonia are so related and we have you see here the the map of uh, of uh, catalonia this beautiful mediterranean uh, uh, country with a very long uh, history uh, producing wines and with these 11 different um, appellations uh, you see here in blue uh, these are the the appellations where garnacha is present is present but is not you know the main focus of, of the appellation. And in red, Empordà, Penedès, Tarragona, Priorat, Montsant, and Terra Alta, that are appellations uh, that really focus on Garnacha and where you can find super, super top uh, and well-regarded uh, Garnacha. So that's, that's the reasons we were looking, looking at. But just to mention, in Catalonia, Today and this is a very up-to-date data. We have 2,200 hectares of Garnacha Blanca and 4,300 hectares of Garnacha Negra. And then the Peluda and the Roja are more kind of uh, uh, residual. So let me talk about Empordà. Empordà, uh, it's a favorite region because I worked many times, uh, many long time for long time at El Bulli. Uh, it, that was the famous restaurants in, in Empordà. Uh, here the garnacha is called Yaduné, eh? Yaduné Blanc or Yaduné uh, Negra, and it reminds me a little bit of to the, to the Priorat. Uh, they have slate and granite soils, and the wines are full, rich, uh, and it's a great potential of old, um, old vines. So actually 60, as you see here, 60% of the Emporda vines are 30 years old, and 70% of all Emporda, it's 80 years old. That, is, that means, wow, no? the, the potential of, of all grapes are, are great. And you know what? Uh, in Emporda, at my back in times, I'm not a winemaker. No, I didn't, I didn't do any, any, but I had some winemaking experiences. And I choose, of course, back in times, 2012 and 13, Garnacha, Garnacha Negra, okay? So welcome to Clorur. I'm very bad in the pronunciation, of chlorur, so I will use a uh, much easier welcome to the poor fruit set. Okay. And I remember, and that's something I've been commenting and talking with, with different producers. I remember in 2012, <clears throat> uh, the, the fruit, uh, the, the, um, we, we didn't have any chlorur at all. So all the flowers 
convert it to, to fruit in a very good way. Uh, but then just previous to the harvest, it rained. So the grapes, you know, they, they get water and they kind of inflate a little bit. Uh, that gives problems, fungus, uh, as, as you know, uh, um, mildews and other, other uh, fungus uh, uh, problems. So somehow, and especially on those uh, young vines, or maybe this kind of viticulture that is um, probably irrigated or, or less accurate, uh, kind of a, a, a slight degree of, po of poor fruit set, it helps just to, to the bunches not to be so compact. Yeah. So I remember 2012, we, we didn't have chlorure and we had lots of fungus because they inflated. But 2013, during the flowering, we had uh, tramontana winds. So the, the fruit, uh, we had less fruit, yeah, but but the bunches, they look beautiful. And, and the fruit was in a perfect condition and super, super healthy. Yeah. So somehow, and I've been talking that with many other producers, uh, a poor fruit set helps uh, and brings up the quality. And that's why in 2012, I didn't do any carbonic maceration. I did a normal uh, winemaking. And 2013, uh, I did 30% uh, of carbonic maceration for my uh, garnacha as well. That, that was uh, uh, not, that it was just for, um, for having fans and friends and family, nothing commercial at all. Uh, okay, second region, Penedes. Nice Penedes. I, I just add the map because you need to know. Sorry for the for you, the, the ones that are studying. Uh, we have now divided our lovely Penedes wine region south of Barcelona in 10 different subzones. Garnacha here is soft, is gentle, it's elegant, it's a bit kind of Frenchy, if you allow me to, to put it in, in uh, that way, and with, with nice nice fruit. Penedes is another beautiful region for, for Garnacha, and we are finding more and more 100% Garnachas in Penedes, which I'm super, super uh, happy. Second very important fact about Garnacha, Garnacha is a very, very, very clever grape variety. Super inteligente, very clever. You know what? Yeah, because uh, when 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 Garnacha, when the plant starts to see that uh, there is not enough water supply, it kind of slightly closes the stomata in a way that can still do some work. Yeah, still breathe a little bit. Yeah, but not like not like crazy. Eh? Not like Tempranillo. Tempranillo is a stupid variety. Garnacha is clever. Tempranillo keeps breathing and doing all the transpiration to, 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 to very, very accelerated. That's why uh, Garnacha is better fit for better treated for um, uh, warm and hot climate because it can slightly close the stomach and it keeps working. Okay, it doesn't develop the the, the color or or maybe the, the tannins, but but it's very very drought resistant and that's why. Uh, that's because it's super intelligent and can detect that he or, or, or that the plant she he is uh, uh, lacking water. Yeah, that's that's a clever uh, great variety, and that's why um, I think we will see this plant and this cultivar in hot warm regions being planted and replanted. Okay, Monsan, uh, Monsan, it's uh, southern uh, Catalonia. It's you see here. This is a, a map we developed with Jancy Robinson to explain the region. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, subregions, not official, not to be studied. Okay, but uh, they they're working on that, but not official yet. Uh, and it's incredible how many garnachas are today produced in, in Monsan since 2000, I would say. Um, I'm not going to say names because, okay, I don't want to be a, a, a commercial here, but since since that time, it's been it's been uh, crazy how many interesting projects uh, betting on 100% garnachas are boosting from, from the region. Uh, and for me, it's kind of a uh, priorat, okay, I'm going to put it very easy and you can criticize if you want, but you know, Monsan, it's, it's kind of a similar quality to, to priorat and even the, some of the soils are in some areas are, are quite similar and, and, and at super uh, great value price point. So you really find lots of quality, of course, some uh, outstanding and, and top uh, 
wants to. Yeah, but it's a reason you can you can really look at, at it to find great quality uh, potential garnaches kind of uh, prior uh, style at a top very nice prices like 10 to 15 retail here in in Catalonia right so Monsan another important um, another important point that low yields are really really um, uh, uh, important for for quality okay I'm sure you know you know that and 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 the ones the ones studying about diploma or the ones going through diploma you have of course heard about the clone 70 that was broadly planted in uh, in southern France uh, giving uh, high yields but kind of dilute uh, uh, flavors and less concentration here in Spain uh, at the time that uh, France was planting this new clone in Spain we were uh, and Catalonia we were planting uh, international grape varieties so we didn't use this clone so all the garnacha that we find planted a uh, long time ago or even today it's from less productive clones. We, we spoke at the beginning of the uh, of the conversation about the clonal importance of garnacha. Okay, so here in in, in Catalonia, most um, I would say all the the, the garnaches are kind of in the, uh, in a very good clonal selection. We don't have clone, clone seventy here, and we are a dry farming country. Uh, and the average yields in in Catalonia it's less than five thousand. So we are very okay here to really get the flavors and the maximum potential of of garnacha. Yeah? And talking about garnacha, I absolutely need to talk um, about Priorat. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one discovering Priorat, but uh, another another uh, map uh, published published in uh, for for Jancy Robinson where we analyzed all the Vida Villa. You know, each village has on the right uh, to use its its name for for a wine produced hundred percent in 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 the village, and that we are starting. I'm gonna say it not not very loud, but we are starting to see kind of differences between uh, villages uh, from Garnacha and from Cariñana. Some, some villages produce more kind of heavy style of Garnacha. The other ones like Escalade, super light, uh, ethereal, with no tannins Garnacha, uh, Bell Moon, more kind of heavy, depending on uh, uh, Grata Jobs, for sure, uh, the orthodox Priorat uh, Garnacha. So we are starting to, to, uh, to see that Priorat always on the top end of Catalonian uh, uh, wines, very low production, this slate uh, soil uh, planted on, on very steep, steep slopes. It's crazy. If you need, you need to visit that, that region. And this is really, really steep. Um, Bacchus Amat Coles, that's uh, an ancient Roman saying, saying that Bacchus, uh, the god of wine, he loved steep slopes. Uh, so do I. <laughs> I'm not Bacchus, by the way. Okay, and now, that's uh, really important. Now it's really important. And it's totally forbidden to kill me. Joseph, Helen, you are listening to me, but please don't kill me. We normally study and we uh, normally talk uh, about Guarnacha like being a low acidity grapes. Okay, that, that has low, low, low acid. And actually, I kind of uh, uh, disagree. And I've been doing a lot of, uh, of research on acidity level in, in garnachas. And OK, we are agreed that uh, garnacha as a grape variety has less malic acid uh, compared to, to tempranillo. But uh, for instance, eh? but tartaric acid, it's, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's low, uh, easily 5.5. 5 grams per liter of tartaric acid it's 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 common for garnacha let me put it this way if you plant shira in a very hot warm region in in southern uh, catalonia acidity is is less than than garnacha different thing it's the flavor profile and the palate profile okay see that's different but but if we look to the numbers if we look to the lab numbers Garnacha still keeps uh, a decent acidity, acidity, although malic acid is super, super low. Okay, so that's something we need to, to review all together. Uh, we are talking a lot in Catalonia about, about that, uh, about this question. Uh, I will be happy to, to keep investigating and, and to do a, a proper research on, on that. Yeah? 
And finally, my last um, wine region, southern, a bit inland in uh, Catalonia, between uh, the Ebro River and the border of uh, Aragon. It's Terra Alta, Terra Alta, Terra Alta. In a nutshell, Terra Alta is 33% of all Garnacha Blanca in the world. Are you seated or what? 33% of all Garnacha Blanca in, in the world. Uh, production alone for alone for uh, Terra Alta with these beautiful modernist um, wineries that are, are a beautiful landscape. It's a great, great, also great vision to uh, uh, to visit. Uh, as I said at the beginning, different timing times, uh, different harvesting times. Sorry, it's uh, it's normal. Okay, for for Garnacha. Blanca, white garnach uh, here, and super deals, super deals, lots of fruits, fruit-driven wines, very sexy, sorry, sexy again, not not, not a word to be used uh, for the velocity, but you know the point, uh, easy drinking, yeah, and, and, and why we love garnacha? Basically, we love garnacha because of the tannins. Tannins are soft, are, are mellow, are rounded, uh, they are not heavy. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's a good mood grape variety. It's so ample and rounded, uh, but not being heavy uh, uh, or kind of harsh at all. It's it's a very welcoming, embracing, embracing grape variety in terms of of palate. Okay, and uh, for the ones doing a lot of blind tasting, let me just do uh, a final tip for you. Uh, a final tip about garnacha. And TDN, TDN, you know, it's this uh, molecule responsible for uh, giving uh, petrol, kerosene uh, flavors. We, we found it uh, in, in Riesling, but also we also find it in, in Garnacha. So if you see here, uh, two uh, micrograms per liter, yeah, you see that the two, okay, two micrograms per liter, that is the perception threshold. So above that, you can actually feel it. Yeah. You, you can perceive the TDN. So you have, for instance, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, uh, Merlot, uh, those great varieties, the, the threshold of, of TDN, it's below two. That means you cannot not feel it. But for Garnacha Blanca and also Shira, sometimes uh, Garnacha Blanca and Shira, you can experience or, or feel it, uh, especially with, with kind of all bottle of garnacha uh, that that might be an aroma you can you can detect. I have been I have mistake a few times garnacha um, and riesling, uh, but although if you keep focus on the palate, then you have some key key points there. Okay, but don't forget sometimes petrol in garnacha can be found. Of course, okay, riesling is almost forty. Uh, Macrograms per, per liter, that means mm, much, much more. But sometimes we think it just a smell of TDN, eh? of petrol. Yeah, but here you find it kind of mixed with the fruits. And, and yeah, so that's that's also a nice, a nice research done by our, our own Vicente Ferreira, who is a top researcher um, for aromas in, in Spain, very top, top guy. Uh, and he has discovered that Garnacha has some white Garnacha, white Garnacha, some TDN. Eh? Just to finish, uh, remember that Garnacha can also be found in a uh, fortified, fortified with uh, alcohol added. And uh, that's also super traditional in, in Catalonia, um, as it is um, easy to oxidize, this, this great variety. We can also find it in an oxidized like Sol, Sol y Serena, like you see here in, in the picture, that means with direct direct sun glass in, in those glass jars. That's very traditional. We look like kind of manuals or port uh, uh, style wines. Uh, and this is a, a, a type and style of wines we, we also um, love here in, in our country. Beautiful for sweet, sweet wines, beautiful for, for desserts. That's a, a grape, uh, a grape that can be also like Muscat, eh? Muscat in, in Emporda, in Catalonia, in Southern Catalonia, and, and Garnacha, they share in common that they're super able to produce uh, oxidative uh, fortified wines. Okay, so I have tried to cover, sorry if I'm, I'm being so quick through, through uh, the presentation, but uh, we need to, to keep with this uh, bite size. By the way, uh, Joseph, I see you now. I have uh, two Spanish 
uh, one Catalan and one Spanish word that is better than bite side. It's, you know, in Spanish, we say mordisquitos, yeah? And in Catalan, musagadetas, which sounds much better than... Okay, yeah, and literally <laughs> bite size. <laughs> brilliant. Uh, Ferran, thank you so much. It's Very welcome. It's brilliant to hear that much information about Garnacha and, and just to see and hear how diverse this great variety can be. Um, so brilliant to, to delve into that. We've We've got some questions from the people that have joined us today on the session, some really good questions. So I'm going to bring them to you now. Um, one here from Carla. Uh, right. And Carla's asking if you've ever tasted Garnacha from Mexico. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe elaborate on that and tell us the most surprising place that you've tried Garnacha from. I know you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. No, no, I have never come across to a, a Garnacha from, from Mexico. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's been planted. Uh, there, but I haven't not not tasted anyone from 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 Mexico. Yes, from Australia, uh, yeah. and yeah, and there are some amazing garnachas being produced in Australia, uh, and, and in in New World it's also yeah uh, an increasing rate. Huh? It's it's yeah, but yeah. but I have a clean memory of a of a garnacha in in Australia that was premium level also. So uh, it's interesting to see uh, that. New world producing countries, they bet on Garnacha for also premium wines and not just. Uh... Completely agree. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had some brilliant um, examples from, from Australia and South Africa also. Um, I, I, I guess uh, and maybe you were suggesting this a little bit in the presentation. I mean, this summer in particular in Europe, there's been so much pressure from drought and the heat level. Would you expect Garnacha to start to be planted even more widely than it is at the moment? I, I'm, I think so. I think so because it's it's a uh, it's a grape that if you work well and you shade the you know, you, you work with the, with the canopy to protect yeah. from from direct sun, uh, it's so so very good on, on the drop resistant uh, character. No, uh, yeah. and so as I said, I, I I was doing kind of joke that Garnacha is a clever grape, but really it is no because it. Well, compared to Tempranillo or some other grapes that keep working, working, working. No, Garnacha, no, he said, okay, we slow down. Uh, maybe the, the synthesis of uh, of uh, anthocyanins is less or the tannins or whatever, but it it, it kind of resists uh, the, the, the heat years and, and, and the drop. Yeah, real survivor grape, I think. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly, exactly. Survivor, uh, yeah. Work. A question here from Anna, who's obviously you covered four different. Um, types of Garnacha in today's presentation. Mm -hmm. are, are there more types beyond that um, or just those four with Garnacha? These are the four main 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 ones, but what is crazy, it's the clonal diversity. Yeah. So uh, uh, Garnacha uh, from, from okay, we, we, we open the scope here. Garnacha from, from Gredos, from Cerebreros. Okay, for Cebreros, for the ones studying, Cebreros is a, it's a new uh, upcoming uh, appellation in Spain. Uh, from from Gredos, the clones are so different to the ones planted in 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 Priorat. So in there, there is always less color, uh, kind of more delicate uh, on on the on the palate, and in Priorat is super savory um, and and fleshy. Uh, garnachas always with uh, this kind of good mood tannins, eh? with soft uh, and gentle and, and very easy to to. To enjoy tannins, but clonal. I would I would always talk about clonal diversity in Aragon. Always when I when I keep traveling to Spain, we end up talking about what clone of Garnacha because it okay the grape variety might be the same, but the style of wine it's totally different, extremely different. Okay, really good point. Um, I, we're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to do a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. um, from the ones that have been posted. One that I think is a really good one is, it's always talked about these special soils in Priorat. Mm -hmm. Could you just give a, a bit more of a description of what uh, Licorella is like as a as a soil type? No, no, like Licorella, Licorella is crazy. No, no, Licorella has, because of the of the, of the the slate, yeah, and the soil formation, the, the water, it goes kind of up, yeah, through, through the Licorella rocks uh, to, to meet the to meet the roots you know yeah. okay okay i'm not i'm not um i'm not the one to talk about minerality because i have okay i, I can i don't feel it that way but uh, Korea it's able 
okay, first of all, it allows roots to be super deep. And also the water, it kind of decaps the water from, from down, 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 okay, yeah. up. So they, they and they meet the, the roots in there. And there's this kind of, uh, so licorella is very good because it helps very old plants to, to survive. And, and if you go to Priorat, you see that. What, what, what would that look like in the vineyard? Like how do, what, if you look at the vineyards in Priorat, what do they look like with that soil? Can you, you can see it there? They, they look, uh, can I put it in one word? They look very tiring, you know, because <laughs> you know, it's so difficult to work uh, uh, and uh, very, very difficult to, to work. And then your the, your back hurts. I can't tell so, but very, super steep slope. I have I have the the the, the uh, actual data and because they have been researching that uh, very deep in the appellation in the Priorat uh, uh, appellation, but it's it, it looks like like layers layers or or, or of of rocks okay uh, super rocky and actually to 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 plant this is uh, it's it, it's crazy because you need to break the rocks uh, if you want to plant yeah so that that's a work you need to do before before planting in 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 Priorat very intense work very intense. Work. Um, one, one more question, and I know this is a big question, but we've got an award-winning sommelier mm -hmm. on the session today. We need to ask you this question for Anne uh, that's come in. Um, can you talk a little bit about food pairing with Garnacha and, and how you would would pair with these wines absolutely absolutely uh, and and i like i really like this uh that that we have come with with uh, this this question uh and okay uh, as you say always at wsct uh, wine pairing can be somehow a bit uh, subjective and depending on on, on the preferable per, uh, personal preferences and on and i kind of uh, be can kind of very really agree but think about yeah think about we have we finished in in our culture in, in the Mediterranean. We finished a lot of of long cooking uh, dishes with with orange. El pato la naranja took mm. orange, yeah, or even with chicken. Uh, and imagine this dish eh, with orange and and then licorice. That's something we do naturally. In, in many recipes, I have uh, and when when you are finishing. Or at, at the medium of, of the cooking process, you add some orange peel and you add some licorice there. That's super beautiful because it, it kind of matches the, the flavors of the of the garnacha. That's something you can you can do. Even even with your yeah, you can you can use orange. That's that's very good with uh, with garnacha. And also uh, garnacha, despite the alcohol. Okay, we have been talking about that and, and garnacha. Uh, it's a very late ripening grape and can have you know, or has normally high 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 alcohol despite the the tannins can be kind of lower uh but but despite uh the the, the alcohol level the tannins are soft that yeah. gives a lot of uh, pairing opportunity because normally what what normally works mm, less with food it's uh high tannins wines so that kind of it has kind of versatility too uh, and it's a it's a grape uh, that it's very welcome to be matched with with easily with with wood. Yeah, definitely found that is especially those those more delicate styles of garnacha. You're talking white meat and fish is absolutely a possibility. With, with, with she, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Especially if they 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 cook, if they are cooked. Yeah, so I'm not gonna use it for for probably uh, like raw fish, but when you do some cooking and and yeah. you work with some kind of uh, onions and, and over, uh, you go to the oven and, and that that works brilliant Ferran, thank you so much for answering those questions I, I want to thank everyone who's attended today it's been a really good audience um what what some some brilliant questions there um we would love to hear from you uh my colleagues have posted a little feedback poll we would love to hear um how you've received today's session please tell us what you think if you'd like to hear more of of things like this. Um, just a reminder that we are going to send out a link to this recording to everyone who's attended and signed up. Please catch up on all of our WCT Events Hub content on the YouTube page. There's an absolute library of content with brilliant speakers, just as we've seen from, from Ferran today. Um, if you haven't started your journey with WCT or you want to continue that journey, head to our Where to Study page. You can find out 
all the information about different course providers around the world and which courses they're offering. Um, so do that after this session. Baran, I want to thank you so much. What a brilliant thank session. Um, yeah, thanks to lots, the audience. Um, thanks. Thank you for WCT also. Eh? And all the, all the ones that are, they are listening to us, uh, go, go for it. It's worth it. It's really worth it. Listen to this, man. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.